have the press present. Um, we have three of the four finance committee members <coughs> present to give us a quorum. Three, four, seven of us, JPs all together. Um, and one, two, two elected officials, and last but probably least is Cliff Tutwood. <laughs> Glad to have Cliff here today. We've got some uh, issues coming out of economic development, Justice Nelson's uh, committee today. Um, hopefully all of you got your expenditure budget and went through it if you cared to. It's a little bit of a long one this month. 131 pages. Uh, most of the time they'll run 105 to 110, but uh, you know this was the end of the year um, and we had a, a lot of changes uh, in and outs. Uh, it's not the finalization of the budget, but but it is trying to close the year out as close as we can get uh, at the end of January or end of uh, December. And looking in general uh, uh, at the various elected officials, everybody was just right on the nose at their 100% budget mark, uh, exception being county clerk to the good. Uh, she only utilized 92%. Um, I, all these elected officials just do an excellent job of, of trying to work on their budget. County general is on page uh, 46 uh, of your expenditure budget at 99%. County roads at 93%. Um, Solid waste, you know, every year when we get to this time of year, we talk about solid waste being skewed just a little bit in the way it presents. It presents at 114% of budget, but the reason it presents at that is because of the uh, CDs that we purchased that we didn't budget for CDs. Um, bought just a little, 1.1 million in CDs, they're about 1.2 million in CDs. And so that counts in the budget, so it shows us that 114 percent it would actually if you factor that out it's 76.74 percent so it's about 75 76 percent if you factor that out. that's kind of what i figured that's great um, the county jail at 103 percent our grand total at everything in the whole county 73 percent uh didn't really pick up I, and I, I didn't make a lot of notes and a lot of red marks in here, but didn't pick up any bad stuff. Uh, just anomalies that, that I kind of wondered about. Just little things that I'll talk to Kelly about, like service contracts uh, in uh, county clerk's office going over, should have been taken out of her automation fund when she had money in there. Uh, she only used like 60% of her automation fund. Uh, I was gonna ask the judge, uh, and just ask him about the vehicle purchase out of the road department, about $108,000. I think he bought uh, three vehicles there and I just want to ask him just see what he bought um, the uh, Bible courthouse construction is in this budget that's one thing that, that added to page 128 uh, as far as actual printed pages go uh, that's the last page of it um, and Peggy you just jump right in anytime I misstep or misspeak or you got you got to add to but we're showing a, a CD purchase of 8.626 million in the uh, Bible Courthouse construction fund uh, we haven't spent just a whole lot of money uh, out of that fund and on page 129 is the uh, Osceola Courthouse construction fund at two million dollars and no expenditures made there yet but uh, so in, in general, we've ended up the budget in real strong condition. Uh, Peggy, I just got a, a general ledger sheet printout of our fund balances. And uh, in county general, we're at 2.717 million in our checking <coughs> account. In our county general CD fund, we're at 3.36 million. That gives us uh, six point, uh, what, a little over $6.1 million. $6.1 million in County General. Uh, I first became chairman of the uh, Finance Committee in 2011, and we had just come off our <coughs> severe hospital issue at that time, uh, and we were virtually busted in County General at that point. But uh, to have risen from there to $6.1 million in our County General Fund, I honestly believe this is the best shape that the County General may have ever been in. 
I mean, like ever been in in Mississippi County history. Uh, and that's a just a joint group effort from the Quorum Court and every elected official over a period of years of working together and holding down cost and at the same time the economic development funds that we've invested raising our revenues in the form of the pilot agreement payments that we're getting uh, every year our tax revenues and pilot agreement payments <coughs> go up and uh, and we're finally seeing the returns on our economic development uh, uh, investments and I'm not trying to brag on you Cliff but but we're doing a real good job in that economic development line. Janice, you've already missed the bragging on your office. So. Did you brag on I'm it? sorry. You yeah. missed it. You missed it. I so. missed it. <laughs> oh, then you talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. I bet he did. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he did. Yeah. 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 Um, Cliff has got two or three items uh, that Justice Nelson's committee uh, met <laughs> on. Uh, and honestly, I'm going to defer to Justice Nelson and Cliff. We've got um, a new core paint project. We've got a uh, salary uh, personnel issue that came out of, I guess that came out of your committee, and um, then website development and all. So, Justice Nelson, you want to you want to mention? Jump right in. Jump right in. Well, Mr. Chipwood presented to his committee along with uh, several members of the economic development committee three requests one of them uh, like you said was for new core paint booth and uh, he's asking for it averages out to six hundred and seventy five thousand dollars eighteen thousand dollars per job for those who will be hired from Mississippi County nine thousand from those who will be hired for the booth hill that will be 50 jobs, 675,000. I don't know what else to say about that. Well, do, you, do we want to talk about that as an appropriation or is your, yes, your I mean, economic development committee is recommending are, that? As yes, an we're recommending that to finance as to appropriate that much money for a new core and that needs to be a line item as well as the other two items. So do you want to go ahead and make a motion on I that do. particular one? I make one? a motion that we appropriate six hundred and seventy-five thousand for new core paint booth out of economic development funds. Well, Sorry. you can take it out of county general. Right, let's, let's, let's work on economic development. They got more. That's the only thing that's got more money than county general right yes. at the moment. I second. We have a motion and a second that we appropriate six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars out of economic development funds. For the new core paint project as presented by Cliff Chitwood in the economic development meeting, planning and development meeting. And we do have Mr. Chitwood present today. I think most of y'all were here when he made that presentation, but if you got any questions at all, here's a good time to ask Mr. Chitwood if you have any. I was not present. Could you briefly? Yes, please. Well, new core has been in a series of expansions for the past couple of years. Yes. And at each expansion, we have essentially offered them the same incentive program, which is that we will incentivize a, if someone from Mississippi County receives a job in, in that expansion, uh, we will incentivize the $18,000 per job or $9,000 per job if they're from Pemiscot or Dunklin County, Missouri. Uh, and that's worked out pretty well. We've been receiving about half the jobs uh, between the three counties on each of their expansions so far. Okay. Well, you did do that briefly. <laughs> that's the way I understood. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion or questions of Mr. Chipley? We've got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Did you have that too? I did. <laughs> he old and I couldn't hear the second item uh, was from the Tadso study. Uh, Mr. Chitwood uh, told us 105 people participated in the study. The, <clears throat> they recommended a new website, the one we have. Uh, I didn't realize it was 20 years old. Seems like only a couple of years ago we appropriated the money to do that. But uh, Cliff says it's 20 years old, so it's 20 years old. Um, and of course, I realize that the technology, all the stuff that the kids do and play on there, ours is, even if it were a couple of years old, it would be, probably be outdated. 
they gave us two options. One was um, kind of like a <clears throat> stripped down model and one was a souped up model. So Cliff recommended that we go with the souped up model, which was option A. And that was uh, 55,000, what was it? 51,115, Cliff? Yes. 51,115 dollars. And so I recommend to the finance committee that we appropriate that much money for a new website. Is that recommendation in the form of a motion? Yes. And I will second that motion. Right. We have a motion and a second that we spend appropriate $51,115 out of economic development funds for updating our uh, county economic development website. And again, we've got Cliff Handy. Any questions? Anybody? The good miss? I finally stood that wheel. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, all in favor, aye? Aye. Any opposed? The third item Mr. Chitwood brought up was uh, he wants to bring on an additional person. Uh, this person will be an internal vice president. Uh, he wants to promote uh, Tamika Jenkins to uh, internal vice president. Did I get those backwards? No, I think that's correct. One is hiring is external. The external, yes, sir. And uh, Tamika will be internal vice president. Currently, uh, economic development's budget is 396000 He's asking for us to add an additional 150000 to that, which will bring uh, economic development's budget to 546000 Now, I've had a little pushback on these figures because of other people, I suppose, in the, in the count and the salaries they make. I did my best to justify it. Uh, I don't know what else to say except um, the people that talked with me thought we were um, spending too much money for employee and we'll leave it at that. But um, I'll make a motion that uh, we decrease their budget 396, from 396,000 to 546,000 and allow the economic development to employ additional person with a salary of 86 or 87.5 plus benefits and um, work with economic development's choosing. I'll second the motion to send it to the full court. It is controversial. Several full court members have expressed concerns. their concerns to me, and I feel like it's something that the full court needs to discuss and decide at that time. That way, everyone has a has a say. In. Excellent. I, I, I don't disagree with that. I, in times of controversy, I have myself begged certain committees to at least get it to the full court and let everybody talk about it. Uh, then everybody can vote their heart as they wish uh, rather than kill it in this committee. Uh, you know, we had, how many of your board members, how many of your board members were there? Three? Three. There were three. Yes. Three of the Great River Economic Development board members were there to speak in favor of it, including Dr. Shimwell, um, Brad Harrison, and um, Lisa John Adams. Lisa John Adams, yeah. So, uh, with their recommendations, I understand the controversy. Um, we're in a poor area and a poor part of the state, poor part of the nation as far as uh, overall salaries and positions are concerned. But um, I hope that we go into this with an open mind and recognize that sometimes you just got to invest in yourselves. Well, <clears throat> we don't always want to be poor. And the only way we're going to rise above it is to spend some money. If we don't spend some money, we're going to always be poor. You know, uh, your fund has also done very well, and, and I was teasing with you while ago when I made the remark. It's the only I one that had more money than uh, County General, but you're uh, actually a little over $10 million in funds in the bank. Now, of those $10 million, some of that's committed. Yes. So it's not like we've got $10 million of loose money, but we do have the money and we can afford this at this time. And truly, I do believe this is an investment in ourselves. Guys, we're gonna we're just recommending to take it to the full court uh, and then have further discussion in, in the full court, which means, Dane Cliff, you're gonna have to come to another court meeting. But um, you weren't here, Miss Hinton. Would you any questions about what we're talking about now? Do you want to talk to Cliff about it or anything? 
what uh, the person that you wanted to <coughs> what would be her duties? Well, she would primarily, I feel like that we've done an excellent job of attracting jobs in Mississippi County, but we have not done so well in attracting people to Mississippi County, particularly uh, supervisory personnel from the companies. Uh, also, and so one of her first, her first assignment would be to create uh, very close ties with HR people at our major factories and start working with them on the idea of bringing uh, personnel into Mississippi County to actually live rather than Dyersburg or Jonesboro or Marion. Uh, to, to get a, a heads up of when somebody's going to be transferred in so that they could show them our school systems and our neighborhoods. Uh, I mean, I like living here. I assume everyone in the room likes living here. We have something to sell as far as life in Mississippi County. We're just not getting an opportunity to sell it. And as the person, and we're going to do a search, but I think ideally this person would be uh, a, a female uh, with children, who, because women decide where families live. Men will pretty much live wherever they're told. And uh, so that would be a first assignment. The second one would be to start a small business uh, incubator. Uh, we've lost a lot of individual wealth in Mississippi County over the past few decades as some of our older families dispersed or moved away. And small business incubators are simply a way of helping people who have an entrepreneurial dream, but they don't know where to start. And this person is, the, the person, whoever we hire will have had several years of economic development experience, hundreds of years of, hundreds of hours of specialized training in order to help them get the business plan, the financial plans, put them in contact with the correct people for the line of work that they're doing. Um, and so hopefully that their small business can get off to a good start and we can start to recreate uh, per individual wealth again in Mississippi County. I was at a conference about three weeks ago and every community that was there that was in our roughly weight range, you know, 30 to 75,000 people, are all having to do this same thing. Everyone has the same story. Everyone who has been aggressively searching out industry and encouraging industry to come to their area has gotten industry, but they're not getting people. So the things that this new person would do would be primarily the same things that everyone, all of our competitors are either about to start doing or have already started doing which is working on getting supervisory personnel, uh, working closely with the Chambers of Commerce. Uh, it's, a, it's a broad range of, of activities that they will have to undertake. Uh, but I can't believe that Mississippi County at present could not use another person who's well-educated in economic development and energetic and willing to roll up their sleeves and go to work. I think it needs to be brought to full. To full court? Yes, yeah, for that type of money. We have them. So, so they can have a better understanding of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's legal. <laughs> um, we've got a motion on the floor that we uh, move this uh, issue to the full court for more further discussion and vote uh, at the next regular quorum court meeting. And the issue would be uh, increasing the uh, Greta or our economic development contract from 396,000 per year to 546,000 per year with the understanding that uh, the bulk of that money would be used in hiring a new uh, vice president uh, and raising uh, one of the current employees to a second vice president and furthering our economic development uh, cause. 
any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Cool. We'll move it and have further discussion. And Mr. Clint Chitwood, if you'd please join us next Tuesday night nice. <laughs> at the Burdett meeting. Uh, oh, oh, Lord help. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. You're exactly right. I would have showed up in Burnett and it was bigger than Dallas. Well, that's good. I've enjoyed Burnett, but I always enjoy going down to Old Seattle too. So. The whole year. The whole year. I hope uh, it's not our last. I got one other thing. Yes, sir. We have about two and a half million dollars that's encumbered for various projects. It doesn't look like we're going to use them. Some of them are a year old, some are more than a year old. We're going to disencumber that money. Do you feel like it needs to come to the Finance Committee? We had planned just to do it in our committee, but if you feel like it ought to come before Finance, it's we already have it on a printout. We don't, I don't think we have it with us today, do we? Clear? No, sir, no. But we're going to disencumber it, put it back in the pot, redistributed as needed. I don't know that we necessarily need to take any further action as the Economic Development Committee. We were trying to recall, I believe in the past, we have just stricken it from the amount. We have. Um, our appropriations are generally made on an annual basis, and if the money's not used up, we actually technically should reappropriate the balance that's left. And sometimes we're a little remiss and don't get that done. But uh, unless we reappropriate it this year and it's over a year old, I don't think it's uh, viable anymore anyway. If you would like for us to, we'd be glad to. But I want to know what the Finance Committee wants. I don't have any problem with that. I mean, I'm on both, but I, I don't believe we've been taking it. We have been. Tell you what would be nice, though, if that committee provided the full court with maybe a list of what you're taking out just for if we get questioned by Joe Public, and not necessarily this committee, just you know, just a handout to the full court and I think we can do that. a notice that hey, this is what we are unencumbering because of lack of use. And I, I do like the comments that Cliff made the other day in regard to uh, the Economic Development Committee that oversees that BGRAA. No, not BGRAA. Anyway, the committee. Greta. That's Greta. Greta. Uh, I think there have been a few cases, and that has to do with some of this money, where they kind of come and wanted money from the county as kind of seed money, and they're going to eliminate that practice. That's my understanding. Yes, Cliff. They're going to have to show that they have the finances to do the project before the county gets involved. Instead of using county money Instead for collateral. Instead of using county money for collateral. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a wise move. I think it's also. Like the pickle man. We provided seed money when I don't think we should have. And I'm not the only one. So if he needs to show that he's got a few dollars to get cranking, not just zero dollars, and I want to. And let's put them in business. Of course, yeah. the incubator biz, uh, deal should take care of a lot of that type of stuff, shouldn't it, Cliff? It should, yes, sir. I mean, the way those they, type of startups right I mean because it guides them through the process of how they uh, a financial plan introducing them to banks to the small bit they can be helped with small business administration loan applications and that type of thing and there's some larger ones on there that you know that uh, we appropriate money for that have never moved forward on. no they, they just I don't know if it fell through or what the deal was, but anyway, I was glad to see that change being made. Cliff, you got anything else for us? Did we touch all your bases? Yes, sir. Thank you. With positive moves. Yes, sir. But we will discuss further the uh, the promotions and additional personnel, right. and and hope for a positive outcome at that one now. Next item of business actually comes from uh, Miss Peggy and uh, the personnel committee. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll defer to you, and then if you want to defer to Miss Peggy, that's fine. Well, I think what we we decided to really do is we're going to recommend that in the uh, finance department, we had authorized a part-time person for this year. Uh, 
we're going to ask the finance committee to reallocate that money to uh, allow for Kelly to become a 40 hour a week person. And then we're going to eliminate the part time position. Are you going to just completely eliminate it or just defund it? Well, I, for right now, I think we're going to eliminate it because there will be no funding for it. I don't see any sense in having a position sitting out there with no funding. So if they decide at a later time, if Peggy and Kelly decide that they need something at a later time, to come back to personnel, we can look at it at that point. Uh, the other items will just be things that will appear as resolutions on the courthouse realigning some positions. But in this one, we do need to move that money from the part-time position over to uh, Kelly's salary. Finance director salary. Um, this will increase the annual salary from 41758 to 51397 with the caveat, that's not a raise, it's an increase in hours. Yes. Uh, going from uh, 1,690 hours to a regular 40 hour work week, which is 2,080 hours. And those numbers, the 41,000 and 51,000 come on the basis of a full, uh, the full 2080, 52 hour work week. And it should probably be noted that it's, <laughs> Actually, what we're doing is we're starting to pay for the hours she's working because last year she had to take 90 hours of comp time or lose it. And of course, we can't have that happen because those are hours she's worked and we have to compensate for That's them. a month. Yes. Uh, and you know, if she's working that many hours, I don't know how many comp hours she actually took plus those, but that's, that's a situation we need to rectify. Okay, so the change would require us to remove or move $12,675 from the part-time line item and then turn around and add $9,639 to the full-time finance director's line item. And then we'd also have to add in $1,476.69 to the retirement line item under the finance director. And the result is a, a small savings to the budget. It's, we appropriated this money in, in totality back in the regular budget, but we're just moving it around a little bit and eliminating the person and actually letting, giving Kelly the time to do the job that she, uh, she needs to get done. So, uh, is, that, is that understandable? I didn't, I wasn't at that personnel committee yeah. meeting. Anybody have any questions? Do I have a motion? I move that we do whatever you say. Make these noted changes. <laughs> whatever you outline. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we have a motion and a second that we remove $12,675 from the part-time uh, position in the, uh, under the finance, uh, excuse me, under the county treasurer's office in the finance department and then turn around and add an appropriation of $9,639 to the full-time line item plus uh, $1,476.69 to the retirement line item in that department. Um, all in favor? Aye. Any other discussion? Um, Second item that we, I don't know if y'all need to do anything with this or not, but uh, in the landfill, we have a part or we have a position for a uh, assistant scale, scale house, house operator uh, manager. Yep. Uh, and we have moved in the personnel committee to eliminate that position. Is it funded? It is funded uh, right at twenty-three or twenty-five thousand dollars. I don't remember. So you so want us to remove that funding? Remove that funding. We go back into the landfill funds. Um, the only move that we need to move is just we'll need to take that money out if you want to eliminate that. We're, we're recommending that. Unappropriated. So that, that was an oversight on my part because <coughs> there was had been some discussion that should have been done going into the new budget. And it was just an oversight. I missed it. Uh, there are still four operator positions. This kind of came to light because uh, the, landfill, the judge hired someone at the landfill and there was some confusion about which slot to put it in and so forth. There are still four positions, operator positions that are listed, but they are not funded. So in the future, if they need additional help, 
then it would be to go to the personnel committee will have to fund a slot but this slot is sitting there I don't and the question was in personnel committee will we probably ever need an assistant scale house operator and my answer was no I don't think we will and so your recommendation also from as chairman of the landfill committee that we to that the slot? personnel committee I was asked and I didn't make that recommendation I don't have an exact dollar to that amount uh, Peggy did you get Kelly to put that together and get the number to uh, to Cindy for a, I don't a, have an unappropriation <laughs> to defund that slot whatever balances has been appropriated in there and it would just eliminate that slot correct yeah okay and like I said there's still four slots that are there they're not funded but if, if they need additional manpower then they the judge would just come through the process so I'll ask her to check the dollar amount but would you put that in a motion and I do mr. bill would you second that do you understand the motion as it was okay we're just going to unfund that assistant scale house operator slot put it back into the landfill money yes yeah, that's a special revenue. Of course, we'll need the res we'll need the resolution to eliminate the slot. Also, right. so it's going to be a resolution. Yeah, eliminate the slot. Resolution coming out of uh, personnel, and then uh, it'll be part of the appropriation ordinance coming from finance. Okay. As far as actual activity for uh, our next. Tuesday night regular quorum court meeting that's all the pieces of business that I know we actually need to act on is anybody got any Peggy Susan Janice any, any anything that we need for any activity Michael I had a question yes sir in looking at the, uh, the report and I don't know if there's been a change in procedures or if I've missed something before or something but in all in almost every office there was a, a pretty good amount of service contract. contract renewals and there was no money budgeted in any of them and is that a different are we doing something different or? It depends on some of where they're coming out of um, and that was a question I had for Janice too actually um, and I haven't even looked at her page 64 um, that's money that could easily be taken out of their automation funds and sometimes comes out of county general either intentionally or accidentally but um, but a lot of that should be coming out of their automation funds and it gets gets funded in automation but then it may not be taken out of automation well the reason the reason I know it I think was because in most every office there was nothing budgeted for that and it held true in the landfill I mean other places too it was in every pretty much every office which I don't have any problem with it other than it needs to be budgeted you're exactly right well, I was just curious thing. about it I don't remember it being that way before that's that's in my notes also comments Peggy or Janice either one <laughs> well I mean you're you got an automation fund too but in general all the service contracts uh, we either missed an appropriation or they didn't have money in there you know or they were much higher than we appropriated didn't mean to put you on the spot not trying to I like your comment either intentionally or accidentally Doss <laughs> <laughs> Janice and, and I know you can't attest to everybody else's but uh, in general are we appropriating enough in service contracts they just been taking it out of my automation so I, I don't even worry about it for that reason I don't even try to put it in the budget okay so where did you where where were they coming out of well they coming out of practically every almost every department almost every office general fund balance we didn't feel what county general yes no they were coming out of something that don't have all those and I, I, I assume that their service has always been some service contracts it would be me because I think I ran out didn't I run out at one time and you had to start paying it out of county general last year yes 
Like, uh, here's one on the assessor's budget. I and mean, I just flipped to that one. I'm not picking on Harley. I just flipped to it and I have it circled in red. We budgeted $6,000, but we paid out $10,201. And so that threw us 170% of budget at, at uh, a negative 4201. So, our, you know, my question was, are we not uh, budgeting enough or should some of that come out of like his amendment 79 or one of his other funds? And that would honestly almost have to be done department by department to see where it would come out of. Because like with Janice, and again, not picking on Janice either, uh, on page 64, um, we don't have any of the service contracts budgeted, but she does have a little money left. Now, I don't know that it would have covered the, uh, the full dollar amount of her uh, service contract. Uh, well, for example, circuit clerk had one thousand dollars budgeted, and it, it ended up forty-four hundred dollars. And the judge's office, every one of them, either they didn't have anything budgeted, or it was almost double what they had budgeted. And I was just wondering if there was a change in the service contracts or anything. Not in the last years, and we've had the same contract for I know two two years, maybe. Maybe it's always been maybe, that way, but maybe, it, what caught my attention. Well, here's a service contract. This is under uh, the collector's office. Service contract zero, and we paid out $5,700. So in that- There's a difference in the way it's being coded or something. The way it's being paid out, because see, that should have come out of her automation fund also. Yeah. And the uh, same thing with Janice on hers. And, and I'm not picking on anybody. This well, is no, that way in every department. Uh, the. Uh, Janice is just because I'm looking at it here. Her service contract dollar amount was two thousand and seventy dollars that we paid out of County General, but we left two thousand and eighty-seven dollars in her automation fund. Normally, we bust her automation fund, but that's—I right. think we just missed that. No, and I think you felt sorry for me. Well, I—I don't. I think we just like you a lot. <laughs> Feeling sorry is just not a good term. <laughs> I think it. There must be a difference. Something that we need to look at or something, I, I'm sure. That's just like the circuit clerk's office has five different budgets and she moves that stuff around and if it doesn't get coded right, and Leslie doesn't have time to code every single item. I think some of the girls are doing that for Well, them. Leslie does a lot of times if, if, if everybody doesn't code their bills, she will look back and see well, how it was coded, you know, the previous year mm -hmm. a lot of times. Um, and you know, I did mention to you the other day that you know some people are taking a lot of stuff out of County General right now that could come out. I don't of, think they should be. Could come out of automation funds. Right. Travel. You know, I mean, people that have money in their automation. Harley has money in his automation right now. Uh, there, you know, to me, I mean, we're going to be we're going to be right back where we have been before in County General if. That, you know they don't use it and it's not fair for some people to use it and some people not to so in understanding automation funds uh, we can't just take that money and put over somewhere else and uh, so they're kind of a dedicated fund <coughs> that come from a dedicated revenue stream and we need to be using those automation funds first and that way we don't have to supplement with County General. It can't go the other way around. Um, we can't take automation funds and supplement County General. We've got to have specific uh, expenditures to charge against the automation funds, no matter whose it is. And those automation funds were all set up by the state government, state legislature, through uh, <coughs> uh, acts of the state legislature. So uh, we'd just like to encourage everybody to use automation <coughs> funds. And then Harley's office and in the collector's office particularly, those funds are, are especially important to utilize as much as possible. And Peggy, you remember we talked to uh, Hannah, who's the girl that does our tax um, settlement at the end of the year every year. And Hannah sat down and explained to you and I last year uh, how those things are funded and, and they truly are. I hate to admit Harley was right and I hate to do it twice in a row, but <coughs> Harley was right and that those funds are funded 80% by the school, uh, our schools, and without hurting the county general. Uh, the schools 
bear 80% of the cost of those funds. So we need to be using those as, as much as we possibly can first. I used to think it was the other way around, but I was completely wrong. And, uh, and so we'd just like to encourage all the elected officials to use their automation funds as much as you can. And, and if you run out, as we've always told Miss Curry, we'll back it. We got your back. We've always taken care of you, even if it takes a little time. But we've always taken care of you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like maybe we need to sit down with Kelly and go over some of this. I, I think it's something in coding. This is something that can, can happen in our cleanup budget. We normally try to do our cleanup budget in <coughs> February, March. Uh, a lot of times it's March, and maybe we can clean some of this up in March. Good point. I caught it too. I, I just had to notice it. Caught me off guard a little bit. Um, real brief. Landfill, two million dollar project. How are you feeling? Uh, it's coming along. We have the money to pay for it. That's the best part. So are we going to get there? We're there. I think our balance at the end of December was two point two million in CD and checking account. Yeah, you've got 1.1 and uh, as of today in the in the uh, in the fund itself, and I think we have a million dollar CD if I remember right. Does that sound right, Peggy? Peggy may have transferred some. I don't know if you've done it yet. It's 1.1 and, and 1 million CD. Okay, so uh, so we're all right. 2.1 total. So we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Uh, another point, real quick, Miss Janice. Uh, it was really nice to see the new uh, ballot machines next door the other day. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling now that you've got them all set up and everything? Feeling pretty good. I think once we learn how to use them and teach the workers how to use them, I think the public will, will be satisfied, be pleased. So are, you must be setting up a training session here pretty soon? Mm -hmm. The 23rd and 24th. We're going to have training sessions. For You're going to do it in here? So everybody from all the different polling places in the county will be coming in here to, to no. train at the same time? Uh, at the beginning, it will just be the election commission and a couple of our main people that work the elections uh -huh. and myself, and then we will get trained and then we will in turn train everybody else that works. This is a May, excuse me, March the 3rd presidential primary, among other things. Uh, how many polling places do you know off the top of your head how many polling places the election commission has? 18. 18 polling places. And three early vote sites. Do you want to comment at all about the information and how it shares between the polling places or anything? Um, you don't though, have to. But, well, let's not. Okay. <laughs> have a good All right, we won't go there. Let's then. Do that. That's fine. But they look great. I mean, they look. They do. Uh, are they paid for? Well, I don't know. Is the check, is the check clear yet? <laughs> no check is clear yet. I'm going to work with Melissa now. We haven't paid our part, I don't think, but I they're partially yes. paid for. They were paid for. They came, you're supposed to come out of the December budget, uh, but uh, they're going to be two of the tabulators short, about 7000 but they've got that in the budget for this year. So Okay. She was going to go, she's already ordered because she was, she was going to come back to finance and say she had to. And as I pointed out to her, it's appropriated. She doesn't have to come back to budget to get that. So I've been picking on uh, our county treasurer and our county clerk. County collector, you got anything you want to let us? Yep. Everything's going good. Is it? get picked up. <laughs> any other, JP got any other, other, other order of business? Anybody? Cindy? The only thing, uh, Daryl asked if we could do a resolution for Don Eldridge. He retired from the juvenile department. And he wanted to do it this month, but he hasn't gotten me any information on it yet. So I don't know if that'll be coming to the court or not. I'll know later this week. I don't know how y'all feel. I'd like for him to run that through the county judge. Still means it doesn't. Well, I'm gonna, I mean, I'm going to mention it to judge. Yeah. But if wanted, the judge is in favor, then... I wanted y'all to know, yeah. too, that it may be on the agenda. So. Yeah, that'd be great. If the judge is okay, then that's fine with us. Okay. Uh, and remember, Osceola, don't be me. 
uh, Osceola <laughs> next Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Steve, you got anything that you want to throw? Cliff, anything else? Yeah, no, we are in the job so still. far this year in, ge in January, which is off to a good start. Yeah. New jobs created. Yeah. Justice Nelson would like for me to remind our county clerk that she'll need to unlock the door Tuesday night. <laughs> okay, guys. Appreciate everybody coming. Uh, if you haven't met Miss um, Hargraves back in the back, I'd like for you to go introduce yourself. She. Uh, She's a very nice lady. Thank you. Meeting adjourned.